Creativity. Everyone wants to know how to do this, how to be more creative. What is it you can do? They always say people who are creative have a different mindset. They think differently. So what we're going to do today is change your brain. Good for it? Yes. Good for it. OK, so what is creativity? This is always the question. It's the marriage of curiosity and creation. It is the discovery of connections that others miss. The really creative people see something that others just don't see. They go, oh, that and that goes over here. And other people go, how'd you think of that? Because you did think of it. You thought of it in a different way. Now, humor draws on universal truths, which are things that everyone accepts as true, like everyone hates a backseat driver, and work good, hard work pays off. And it also includes discovery and surprise. There was a comedian who said, my wife and I were happy for 20 years, and then we met. So the humor is the, uh, a surprise moment that you didn't expect it was going to happen. What fuels creativity? Anybody have an idea what fuels it? Some of the tips are up there. You can participate. Programs, music. Music, puzzles, <laughs> paintings. See, you're awake. And mental exercise, what I call brain gymnastics. Like gymnastics, brain gymnastics, make stuff happen up there. Now, how many of you have ever gone to a store and looked at clothes and said, I hate this stuff? Mm -hmm. Raise your hand. Did you go to the dressing room and try it on? Your assignment now is to go to the dressing room, try on the most horrific thing you would never be caught dead in, go in the dressing room, put it on. The shock will wake up the right brain. You go, what happened to me? Don't go out. You don't have to show anybody, but do it. Do it one time in your life. Something outrageous. Something you'd never in a million years walk down the street. It's an important thing to do, because you look at yourself completely differently. Like, who's that? What happened to me? Good for you. Maybe you'll like it. You never know. So here's what Oliver Wendell Holmes said. Man's mind, once stretched by a new idea, never regains its original dimensions. So once you go to a new place mentally, you're not coming back. It's a one-way ticket. And you just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And your mind just expands with new ideas because you've stretched it. And creative thinking helps you do that. OK, be free. Let yourself explore. When you were a kid, if I said, let's go in a cave, what did you say? Yeah. Let's go. Did you say, well, what's going to be in it? I think it's going to be boring. What if I don't like it? What did you do? You went. How many of you have been to Ruby Falls in Tennessee? Look at Mountain, Chattanooga. Was it amazing? Yes. OK. It's 145 foot underground waterfall. So you go into the cave, 145 feet. You walk in, and there's this humongous, gigantic waterfall inside a cave. And the sound, can you imagine? You're surrounded by a cave and all this music. It's like musical. You hear this sound coming down. It's almost like surround sound, because you're enclosed. And it's coming down from a humongous, a gigantic, enormous height. And you're under the ground. And it's all natural. It's called Ruby Falls. Till you go there, am I right? So you've been there, right? You got to go. It's worth the trip. Were you amazed? I was loved and amazed because it's, it's, it's all the sounds and everything. That's the sounds. It went, oh, it sounded like an orchestra. It sounds like an orchestra. It's exactly like a, like a full orchestra. Because you hear it and you're just like, in, you're completely enveloped in it. It's just wonderful. All right, so abandon. What do you think you should be abandoning? Fear. Judgment. Fear. And, and fear and cynicism. You know, you get to a point in your life where you're cynical. You don't mean to be, but eh, you've been burned a few times around the block. Eh, you don't believe this, you don't believe that. And rightly so. But when you want to play in the toy box, you've got to let go of all that. Be in a childlike state. Be curious. Be receptive. Because if you're receptive, you're listening to things around you. You're not closed. You're being receptive and engaged. If you're not engaged, you're sitting back like this. You're never the driver. It's nice not to be the driver, but it's really a lot more fun. How many of you know about a luge? Now, OK, wouldn't that be a fun thing to do, but you want someone else driving down that? No, you want to be in charge of that, because you don't know where it's headed. It's so much more fun to be driving and engaged and participating in your own life. If you're not here, like how many of you are here physically? But how many of you are here mentally? I'm happy you're here. 
because I miss you when you're not here. But do you know you're not here? Okay, you go down the street. How many of you ever missed the exit on the highway? Raise your hand. Okay, and, but you were behind the wheel, right? You missed the exit on the highway. So who was driving the car? <laughs> Who's driving the car? If you were sitting there and you missed it, mindfulness, being here at the moment, you're curious, you're receptive, and the last thing is you're engaged, fully engaged. Search for crazy ideas. Here's what Albert Einstein said. Ready? Read. If the first idea is not absurd, then there's no hope for it. Crazier, the better. Look at the visual, it tells you something. New ideas do a bunch of things, four things. They have fresh connections. So when you see things that connect, that's what happens when you start to spark an idea. You see a fresh new connection. You see new directions. Well, I didn't think to go that way. Even if somebody recommends something, well, I never thought about that. A suggestion from another person can take you in a whole new direction. Just a few words can change the way you are headed. And it might really be the right way to go. Unique revelations. Like, oh, that little, oh. Somebody will say something in a meeting, in a classroom, in a conference, and you go, oh, that little O oh is good for your brain. Really good. It's like, wakes you up. It's like a little light went on. And then, of course, we have our very last one, original solutions. You look for original ideas? Well, how do you get them? Fresh connections, new directions, unique revelations, and original solutions. You get them by engaging yourself, by being curious. How many people are always curious about something? Forever curious, always learning. You know why? You're the creative people. The people who never read anything, never find anything out, who are they? They're boring. You're interesting. You could say anything to me, I'd be listening, because you probably thought of something maybe I didn't think of. It's an idea, revelation. Become a pioneer. Now, I have a great story for you. Radio talk show. I had a radio talk show in Miami, and I had it, and it was called uh, Artists About Themselves. And it was for public radio. And they said, production department said, well, why don't you get a sponsor? Get it underwritten. So I go, I don't know how to do that. I never did this. Okay, who has money at that time? Banks. So I wrote letters to banks and wrote a proposal, which I had never done, explaining what the topic is, and I sent it out. Somebody calls. They're interested in s sponsoring my radio talk show. I go down to the bank. I'm like, eh, it can't be real. She's sitting at the typewriter. There was a typewriter then, waiting to kick out a check. And the president of the bank goes, oh, we love this idea. Who do we write the check to? Correct English would be, whom do we write the check to? But it doesn't matter who's writing the check. So I go over to the phone, and I go, you know, who's he write the check to? And they go, they start laughing. They're laughing. They're laughing their heads off. I'm like, no, really? Who do they write the check to? They're watching me. It's the president. And they go, uh, you're not kidding. I go, no, I'm not kidding. We don't know. Wait, they don't know. How can you not know? Well, nobody in 44 years ever did this. But they told me to do it, so I did it. But they don't know now what to do with it. So here's what happened. Six weeks go by. Six weeks. Now you can lose a deal in six weeks. Luckily, I didn't. Six weeks, we got the deal. And they, say, they go, well, why don't you renew it? And I, I did renew it because I'm a pioneer. And just because you don't think you can do it, look at the bumblebee. Have you ever looked at the bumblebee? Seriously looked at him? OK. What does he look like? OK, he's aerodynamically designed not to fly. Big tummy, little wings. But he doesn't know it. So he flies. But if you look at him, he shouldn't lift off. Because think about it. Next time you see a bumblebee, notice that. Because I think about that. I go, how does he do that? Just like that, I didn't know I couldn't do it. So my question to you is, are you ready? Minds are like parachutes. They only function when open. The Scottish whiskey distiller, Thomas Dewar, said that. So when you look at this and you think about that, are you here? Are you letting yourself go fly? Are you up in the stratospheres? We have some people who have done parachute diving. I know some of you have done it. I attempted it. I thought about it. I made the appointment and I chickened out. <laughs> I did chicken out, but you know why? My husband said, well, maybe you shouldn't do it today. Can't you do it another time? I said, well, I could do it another time. It was, well, I shouldn't say where it was, but it was in Miami, I don't wanna say where. And the morning, the exact time, 11 o'clock on a Sunday, that I was supposed to take that jump, 
total crash. The instructor had 3,000 jumps. All the shoots didn't open. They're dead. And I said, true story. So I said, uh, maybe I should listen every now and then. I didn't take that dive. I didn't jump. True story. But I'm here now, so there you go. All right, so are you stuck instead? I know, right? A closed parachute, is your parachute completely shut down? Are you shut off from new ideas? Are you hesitant about change? Change is great. Look at me, I'm standing here now. You're here, you weren't here yesterday. Change is great. What do you learn from change? One thing for sure. Adaptability. It's already happening. Just like you said, it's happening right now. Change is right now, you're not even who you were a second ago. Five minutes ago. You're different from five minutes from now. You can't be you tomorrow. You can only be you right now. You're going to think about that. <laughs> you're going to go, where did I go? Because you're not who you are. Okay, here's a perfect example. My sister is a, an elementary school educator, a specialist. So her class are like little tykes. You know, elementary, they're a preschool, elementary grade, kindergarten. So they gave her third grade. She was in a total panic. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I don't have to teach third grade. I said, here's what you're going to do. Go to the classroom and look at the size of the seats. Can you sit there? Then you know more than they do. Stand up and talk to them. Then look at the size of the desk. It answers your whole question about perspective. It's not who you think you are, it's who you really are. Nothing should scare you. So kids say, when I, you say, why am I locked up? Here's why. Kids say, let's play. Adults say, no time. What happened to you? What happened to that? Let's go play. I'm always ready to play. Give me an idea, I'm, I'm good to go. Play is fun. Play is about discovery. Play is about joy. It's the candle for enlightenment. It's not frivolous, it's fun. And you forget about fun. You forget about how to have fun. You get so serious, morose, skeptical, you know? But what about your hope, your dreams? Even if they're not good, who cares? Come up with another dream, that one didn't work. Throw it out, change, change. So. Look at the little kid scribbling. The best way to learn is to play. play. Ari de Hoos said that. He was the former head of Shell Oil Company. It's a Dutch word, so I tried to pronounce it correctly. For those who speak Dutch, forgive me. All right, so I want to talk to you about the Zen mind. We'll take a little bit of time on this. And these six steps will really help you open your mind up a little bit. Flow. How many of you ever did something that you were so involved you forgot what time it was? All of a sudden you go, I can't believe what time it is. I didn't eat lunch, I forgot dinner. It's like, how did the day go by? Why? You were in flow. A total state of where you're completely in the moment. Total mindfulness. Completely physically, mentally present. Engaged. Involved. That's when you're in flow. So that's number one. Keep pushing yourself when you work on a project till you get yourself in flow. And don't take distractions. Put a little sign up. Okay? A little sign on your desk. Priority time. That means this is my time. Don't talk to me, don't call me. I, unless the house is burning down and you have the fire people here, don't interrupt. So then you stay in a state of flow because you know if you interrupt yourself, it takes 20 minutes to get back to where you left off. You know that. Time it. You're right here and then where do, what was, and you forget where you were. So don't let people interrupt you. Okay, the second one. No mind. How do I have no mind? You don't need a mind. There are times you shouldn't have a mind. You should, for example, the Zen student goes to the Zen master, and he says, here, hold the cup. And the Zen master keeps pouring in the water, pouring in, of course it's spilling all over the place. And the Zen student goes, but all the water's spilling out of the cup. I said, that's your, he goes, that's your mind. There's no more room for anything else. So having no mind allows you to let stuff in. You can absorb without judgment. So. Another Zen master was in the village, big, famous Zen master. People loved him. He was kind. He was compassionate. He was inspiring. And one day there's a knock at the door. He opens the door. There's a farmer and his daughter. And they hand him a baby. And they say, what a terrible thing you did. You got my daughter pregnant. This is your baby. You take the baby. He goes, is that so? A year goes by. He takes care of the baby like it's his own baby. A year later. Of course, no one spoke to him. Everyone was shunned in the village. The girl is there with the father. I'm so sorry. It was the boy next door. It wasn't you. She finally told me the truth. Can we have the baby back? He handed the baby back. He said, is that so? 
no judgment. He'd just take care of the baby. He didn't talk to the villagers who didn't want to speak to him. He didn't defend himself because why? Convince a man against his will, he's of the same opinion still. There's no way to convince somebody that he wasn't guilty. There's the baby. So that's number two. No mind. Just don't judge. Just be there. Be in whatever place you're in. Mind like water. OK, what is the shape of water? Tell me the shape of water. It's a simple. Takes the shape of anything it's put in. It's in that bottle. It's in a bottle. It's in a vase. It's in a vase. It doesn't have, and does it have color? What's the color of water? Right. So what if your mind were like that? Responsive to circumstance. Wherever you put it, it just flowed into the place that you put it in, whatever vessel it's in. How amazing would that be? For you to just become wherever it is. Whatever the idea is, you go with that. You go with this. You just, you're in total flow all the time. You're responding to your circumstance with no judgment. Letting go is number four. Now, I want to talk to you about letting go. How many of you ever looked at trees and had a serious thought about trees? OK. Have you looked at trees and really thought about them? I think about them a lot. I'm very concerned about the trees. I'll tell you what worries me. They can't move. Now, what if right now I took a hammer and nail and hammered all your feet into the floor and none of you could move for the rest of your life? This is it forever. You go like this, like this, but you can't get up and leave. You have no mobility. That's the tree. If he's next to a highway, he gets no air, the poor thing. But if he's in the garden out in a meadow, he's breathing, he's free. Now what happens when a big wind comes by? If he's not flexible, kaboom. Now, let's say all of you had complete strangers walk in the room right now and said to you, I'm going to move into your house indefinitely. You don't even know who these people are. Would you be OK with that? The tree has birds, has ants. They make nests. It has chipmunks. It doesn't have a sign, no squirrels on Tuesday. It allows you in. So the squirrel can go there, leave a nest, leave his little nuts, collect stuff. And the tree's OK with that. I wouldn't be OK with that. If you had a bunch of strangers walk in, you wouldn't be OK with that. Now they're building stuff in your house. But the tree allows. How amazing is that? And just is stuck with whatever happens to it, no matter what. And then it loses all its leaves. Then it comes back. It has a life, but it can never leave. It even has to have luck where they put it or where it grows, and if there's a fire. But it's really serious. I think about the trees a lot. So I'm worried about them. Because I think, what if you were a tree? Could you be happy with that? You say they don't have consciousness. How do we know that? Prove they don't. How, maybe there's some unhappy trees right now over there going, I'm miserable and I can't do anything about it. And who's going to listen to me? Maybe when you hear the rustling of the trees, maybe they're complaining. Who knows? So the next one, number five, joy. There's a tremendous thrill. There's an ecstasy in creation. If you've ever created anything, there's just so much fun creating. Try it. Do something. Create something. Paint, sing, dance. I don't care. Do anything. But there's a moment of complete joy, almost ecstasy. It's, it's just total bliss when you are in the process of creation. The next thing is the mind of a child. Total pliability. You give a kid a toy, and what does he do? He plays for hours with the box. Five minutes with the toy, hours with why? Because with the box, he could be anything. He could stand on the box, yay, I'm an explorer. He can go in the box, he's in a cave. He can stand on the box and he's president. He could do anything with the box. With the toy, it's limited. It's very limited. So let me tell you about obstacles that you could overcome. True story. So I had an ad agency at one time. We had clients, and one client was a little chocolate shop on a side street, hidden in a little corner of a strip parking lot with a big tree. And you couldn't find him, but around the corner on the main street, was another chocolate shop, and everybody got lost and went to him. So we went there, and they I go, how are we going to survive? They always go there. No one can find us. They said, even we have a tremendous telephone pole in front of us. So I got to thinking. I said, tomorrow morning, why don't you look outside? Tomorrow morning, they went outside, and the telephone pole was painted candy cane stripe, white and red stripes, candy cane. They go, well, did you do that? I said, well, that's illegal. You can't do that. But it'll take months and months and months for the city to paint over it, and you got free advertising. Look for the candy cane, and there's our place. Now, 
that's taking an obstacle and creating an opportunity. So I can't say we did that. But I can say they had a wonderful opportunity at that moment. So now I want you to think about this. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. This was from a spiritual teacher. The quieter you become, the more you can hear. Think about that and look at that for a moment. How quiet that is. It goes from blah, 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 internal dialogue to less internal dialogue to a whisper of internal dialogue to quiet in your mind to total quiet. Because when it's quiet, you can really hear you. And we've got so much going on up there, we can't hear anything. You can't even hear yourself. I have to repeat myself because I'm not listening when I'm speaking aloud. So now we're going to look at recharging your brain. There are five steps to recharging your brain. Number one, know what's blocking you. Try to figure out what's really blocking you. Plan how to crush those blocks. What's up there that's stopping you? Are you fearful? Are you hesitant? Do you say, I can't think today? Nothing's coming to me. Are you telling yourself you're not creative? Are you the obstacle? OK, now you're going to incubate, forget the idea, make believe you don't have a problem. And what happens when you let it alone? When you're trying to figure out a problem, when does it come to you? The answer comes when? In the shower, when you're driving, when you can't have anything to write down, when you're walking, when you're daydreaming. The answer comes just like that. But before the answer comes, you need to incubate, leave it alone, and what I call mental marination. Let it simmer back here. And then what happens is, kaboom, eureka. I call it spontaneous combustion. All of a sudden, you have the aha moment. And it comes to you just like that. Now, before you finish the process, check if you solved the problem you began with. You might have had a great answer, but it didn't solve your problem. Then you've got to go back and see, were well, those the problems that stopped me that I resolved? That's what you need to look at. OK, this one. Albert Einstein said, I have no special talents. I'm only passionately curious. Notice how often curious comes up. That's what he said. I'm just passionate, just. I'm only, that only, passionately. Look at the choice of words. Only passionately curious. It's amazing. Just his curiosity is he's attributing his genius to curiosity. That anyone else could think like I do. But I'm just, you know, creative. If you don't think you're creative, you need to be willing to learn, fearless in new terrain. You can't be fearful. You've got to try it. If it scares you, try it all the more. Because you'll grow from that fear. Be rejection proof. You know, you wonder how many times people send out manuscripts and get rejected, or for ideas in a creative agency and get rejected. Be rejection proof. Think of yourself as Teflon coding. Like you've got Teflon coding. Let's just go by. Don't react to their reaction. And don't let your limitations limit you. They didn't like it, come up with something else. You're not limited. You know, your factory, your brain factory is enclosed. You don't like that idea? Well, I have another one. I'll give you a, for instance, I had a, 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 I thought a great idea for a book. Sent it in, oh, they were all over it. This is the greatest thing, and you're approved. The book deal is going through. Oh, great. A Couple of weeks go by, and this conversation begins with, ah. Uh, anytime someone calls you and goes, uh, What's well, coming after that is not going to be good for you. Uh, about that book deal, yes. I know you're not going to believe this, but another acquisitions editor had another author who wrote the same exact table of contents, wrote the whole book, and they sent me the manuscript. It was just what I was going to write. Exactly. Turned out we wrote our, my second book I wrote with her because I figured if she thinks like me, let's do a book together. And it's true. That's just what happened. But she had my exact outline chapter by chapter. So they said, well, maybe you'll come up with another idea. You know, there's like 30 page proposals and I go, wait. And sure enough, you have another idea. It's not closed. That didn't work, something else will work. That doesn't work, something else will work. You don't want it, someone else will want it. Think of dating. You didn't want her, he didn't want you, but somebody else wanted you or them or whatever. It's not over because it was over, it's the beginning. Okay, so failure is good. You should fail. If Thomas Edison didn't fail, he didn't fail. He learned how not to make a light bulb. He never failed. He had like a thousand, they say 10,000, who knows how many, experiments and they all failed. They go, aren't you sick of failing? He goes, no, I learned how not to make a light bulb. That's a good answer, right? Success is measured by our ability to maintain enthusiasm between failures. It's one of my favorites. I have that up everywhere. 
Winston Churchill. Success is measured by our ability to maintain enthusiasm between failures. It's your enthusiasm that gets you through everything. You're going to have failures. They're coming. You know, remember cyclical? They talk about the winter of your life. Well, winter comes every year, so guess what? You're getting more than one winter, chances. So you've got to just weather it. Spring is coming. Summer's on the way. Maybe not tomorrow. Don't get discouraged. They say, you can't do it. I say, you're right. They get all puffed up that they think I'm right. I go, yeah, you can't do it. Not you can't do it. No, you can't do it. So I had a literary agent. They said, oh, once you get an agent, oh, this is great. You know, they'll get you deals. You'll be all set. So I would go to book expos, and I see all the agents pitching the books. I don't see my agent. Go to another one. See all the agents pitching the books. I don't see my agent. Right? He's like a secret agent. Where is this guy? Have no clue what this guy's doing. Every time he called me, he had three words. The problem is, for three years, the problem is, the problem is, oh, I said, well, send out the manual. Oh, no, 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 it's Christmas. You can't send out a manual. Nobody reads anything over Christmas. So finally I said, the problem is, uh, you. That's the problem. Two book deals were signed and done over Christmas. They do read over Christmas. That's not a belief that you should take. For you it might be true, but it may not be true for you. What was true for that person may not be your truism. Yes, I make up words. Okay, so trust your instincts. You have the best instinct. You ever meet someone in two seconds, you know, uh, no. And then you give it a chance, oh, I shouldn't be judgmental. And guess what? Were you right? Right. Whatever that little thing inside you said, uh, NG, no good. You should have followed that because you were right. You're always right. Listen to yourself. Who knows you better than you? People say, oh, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. But maybe you should do that. You can't listen to other people. It's you. It's your life. You're the expert on you. So take risks. Every person who succeeds and is crazy thinkers, what do they do? They jump off the building. But they remember halfway down, oh, maybe I should have taken a parachute. But you don't always need one. Sometimes you just land on your feet like a cat. I want you to think about daydreaming. To help you, here's a picture. How many? My trees. You know my trees. I sit and I think about that. You know, here he is. Look how big he grew in the same place. He looks happy. This one looks like a happy little tree. He's got light and shade. I don't see too many uh, tenants. He seems to be doing pretty well. Daydreaming is a wonderful place. You should be dreaming all the time. Dream about today. Dream about tomorrow. Dream about, you know, when you dream about what could be, make it happen. And not could be, it will be. Change it from it could be to it will be. Big change. I rethink words. People say negotiation to me. They go, no. No. To whatever the idea is. And all I hear is no negotiation. I just do. I just feel in my heart of hearts that you haven't realized that you're going to agree with me yet. So I come back every couple of months with the idea and I keep presenting it. And you go, no. And I hear no negotiation. And eventually, my batting average is about 98% that you will turn your idea around and see it my way because you just didn't realize why it's a good idea yet. Yet. I chased after somebody to be in my book. I wanted to show these images, and I wanted this campaign for two years, 22 months. Finally, he gets on the phone and goes, why are you pursuing this for so long? I said, because I wanted fabulous ads, and this is an amazing campaign, and I want to put it in my book. Next thing, from having no images, I have a personal assistant. Anything I want, 50 images the next day, she won't leave your side until you get everything you want. And then he said, and by the way, if I write a book, I want you on my team. Because I don't quit. That's a true story. I have a student who said to me, impossible spells, I'm possible. And I loved it so much, I said, I have to share it with you. It's fabulous. Fabulous. I want you to revisit childhood every now and then. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is this. Change your brain. I promise you, you won't miss it. Thank you for your support. <laughs>